is an overview of solving quadratic equations. Just to give you a general idea of what you're doing in this. Now when I'm solving quadratic equations, I'm looking for x. And when I'm looking for the x-intercept, that means I'm letting y equal 0. That's why some books call this finding the zeros. Because it's been y is 0, I'm looking for the x. Now quadratic equations could possibly only have one real solution. Now I will try to draw this. But it's when the parabola comes down and it touches and it goes back up. See, I only have one x there. When does this happen? This happens when my discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, is equal to 0. That's when I have only one real solution. Most of the time, quadratic equations have two solutions. Remember, this is a parabola. And it crosses not one place, but it crosses two places. Two real solutions. When does this happen? When b squared minus 4ac is positive. Or we could say greater than 0. In the last scenario, I may have two imaginary solutions. This is when I have my parabola. And look, it never touches the x-axis. When does this happen? When b squared minus 4ac is negative or is less than 0. OK, there are several ways to solve these quadratic equations. The first method that you will learn is by factoring. So what you'll do is you will get everything on one side, and then you will factor the problem. So when I'm factoring, I would get something such as like x plus 2 times x minus 5 equals 0. And then I will need to use the zero product property. What is a zero product property? If I had 8 times 0, I would get 0. If I had 0 times 2, I will get 0. If I have a times b, I will get, and if I get 0, that means either a is 0 or b is 0. So what the zero product property does is if this times this is equal to 0, your common sense tells you that the first thing is going to be 0. So x plus 2 is going to equal 0. And I would solve this. So x would actually equal negative 2. Or x minus, or this would equal 0. x minus 5 would equal 0. Which means x would equal 5 in this case. So the first type the first method for solving quadratic equations is factoring. So you're going to factor it, use a zero product property, and then get your solution. Okay, the second way to solve a quadratic equation is by the square root property. You use this when you only have x squared, or either a binomial squared to get rid of that squared thing. So if I had x squared and I want to get rid of it, I would take the square root. Watch this example. If I have the square root of 3 squared, that means the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 9, well, 
the square root of 9 is 3. So when I square a square root, your answer is just whatever is underneath there. So even if I had the square root of a valentine and I squared it, what is my answer? It's just a valentine. So I use the square root property when I have just something squared. It could be a binomial squared or just an x squared. I cannot have an x squared and an x to the first. Okay, another way to solve a quadratic equation is by completing the square. We use this method when I have an x squared and an x to the first. Since I have both of these, I cannot jump to the square root property. So I have to find a special number to add to both sides. Now what am I talking about? If I had, let's say, x squared plus 10x equals some number over here. I cannot use the square root property. I cannot take the square root of both sides because I have an x squared and an x. But what can I do? I can find a little special number. And I can add some number right here. Whatever that number is. When I pick this number, after I pick it, I know that when I factor this, it's going to factor into something squared. I'm going to pick the number so it will do that. How do I pick this special number? Okay, so I take the number that's with the x to the first, or the variable to the first. I take the number, in this case it's 10. I'm going to divide it by 2. And then I will square it. Divide by 2 and square it. What do I do? I divide it by 2, square it. In this case, I get 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Squared is 25. I'm going to choose to add 25. But can I do that just because it's my birthday? No. If you add 25 to this side, you have to add 25 to the other side. And what's going to happen here is that I'm going to be able to factor this. x squared plus 10x plus 25, that will factor. It's going to be x plus 5 times, guess what, x plus 5. On the right side, you do need to go ahead and add those together. What is 15 plus 25? It is 40. But notice this. x plus 5 times x plus 5. That is going to be x plus 5 squared. Now, why did I want something squared? Why did I want this? Because I want to be able to use the square root property. I could not use the square root property on this first. I had an x squared and an x. So what did I do? I found a special number. I added it to both sides. Where did this special number come from? I took the number with the x, divided it by 2, and then I squared it. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Square it is 25. Now, why in the world did I do that? Because I knew that then I would factor this. And it's going to be two binomials that are the same, which means it's going to be x plus 5 squared. And then I can go back to using my square root property. So we'll do a problem like this later on in this unit. And the last way that we can solve a quadratic equation, 
meaning I can find the x's, is by the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula works every single time. But if I can factor it, factoring is definitely the easiest way to do it. If you're good at factoring and it is factorable, sometimes it's not good, sometimes it's not factorable. And sometimes you're not good at factoring. And if you're not good at factoring, go watch those factoring videos. Anyway, the quadratic formula works every single time. So all you need to do is, if you have an equation, let's say it is 3x squared plus 4x minus 7 is equal to 0. I need to find my a, b, and c. I have to get everything on one side, which it is. My a is equal to 3, b is equal to 4, and c is a negative 7. That is a negative 7. So I do have to be careful when I plug it in. And look right under here. This is the discriminant. This b squared minus 4ac, remember the first part of this video? If this is positive, I know I'm going to have two real answers. If it's negative, wow, I'd have a negative underneath a radical. I can't have a negative underneath a radical because I will get imaginary numbers. So if b squared minus 4ac is negative, I will get two imaginary answers. And if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, obviously when I work this problem out, if I go plus 0, minus 0, I'm going to get the same answer. So if the discriminant is 0, I'm only going to get one real answer. So, you will need to learn the quadratic formula because there are times that you're going to want to use the quadratic formula to find both of your x's. Now, I cannot sing. If I could sing, I would be in New York on Broadway. I can't sing. But I will sing for you this song, and I hope it's so annoying that you cannot forget it. That way you will not forget the quadratic formula. I would love for you to sing along with me. Are you ready? Okay, the quadratic formula. It's negative b, negative b, plus minus square root, plus minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, all over 2a, negative b, negative b, plus minus square root, plus minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, all over 2a. One more time now, negative b, negative b, plus minus square root, plus minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, all over 2a. And that, my dear friends, is an overview of solving quadratic equations. So to solve quadratic equations, you can either factor it, that means get everything on one side, and use the zero product property. You can use the square root property. That means get the squared item by itself, and then just take the square root of both sides. You could complete the square. Why do we complete the square? It's because I have an x squared and an x to the first, so I can't use a square root property. So I find a special number to where when I factor it, it's going to end up being a binomial, like x plus 2 squared. And when I factor it like that, I know, yay, I have something squared. I'll take the square root of both sides. I'm using the square root property. And last but not least, what works every single time is the quadratic formula.